Morbius has been in theaters for two weeks now, and despite the critical and public acclaim it has attracted, its share of detractors. While some critics have been quick to ask for lesbius or fewerbius, and others have pointed out that the film has failed to attract an audience despite featuring a bisexual vampire Matt Smith, most morbheads are content to humbly ponder their morb. Far from simply being pickle rick for cat girls, this heavily stylized biography of celebrated French artist Jean Giraud is the most deliciously complex exploration of meta-narrative since 2002's adaptation. Despite some issues with pacing and character development, not one person has been unmoved by Jared Leto's stirring and passionate delivery of Morbius's famous to Morbius and to Morbius and to Morbius speech famously culminating in the immortal line, no more BS. And the now famous love scene between Morbius and surprise co-star Venom is Cronenbergian in its framing of flesh as both tender and horrifying, especially considering that Jared Leto's performance required him to act without a partner. But despite the film's failings, no one can argue that it's live, and so something's going to happen. From near and far, young and old, people of every shape, ability, and gender, welcome to Voting Ready Live. Today on the show, we crack open the Silver Age vaults and shovel out a bunch of Hooper heroes. We tune to the color of a dead channel, forever playing PowerPoint Karaoke. We come on and jam, and welcome to Will It Slam? I've noticed that we say, that sounds like us, way more than is healthy for a business. Hmm. All this and more on Loading Ready Live, starting right now. Right now is when it's starting. Hey everybody. Welcome to Loading Ready Live. Woo! Woo! Woo. <laughs> Great to be here! <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to uh, our first segment, which is Pooper Heroes. This is, I believe, Pooper Heroes 4. <laughs> I don't know what that, that's like the return of the return of the return of Pooper Heroes. The LCU, the LURCU. Yeah. Mm, the most ambitious crossover ever. Mm. Mm. Uh, Big thanks to uh, the uh, the one who uh, put this all together, uh, Gru, or they go by various variations of Gru in chat. Um, they have an uh, unending supply of terrible, terrible superheroes. Uh, so let's begin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the name of the superhero. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me uh, what that superhero's powers are. Uh, and then I also want you to tell me if you think they're a hero or a villain uh, or neither. Mm. Or, oh. or, or both. <laughs> All right. Or both? Four uh, options? Well, I mean, neither or both, it's kind of the same thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so, it could be written depending on the writer, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Punisher, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And like, as and, always, chat is going to be turned off for this, right? Yeah, we're going to have to mm -hmm. turn chat off for this one. Because chat can definitely uh, have a big impact on this. Well, that's mm. trusting they know anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, they came on. They can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not looking at how they responded to. That came uh, out meaner than I meant. Okay. <laughs> no, it didn't. You just lied to them to compound it. Oh no. All right. Let's start with the first. The first hero. Prodigy. Ooh. How is it spelled? Oh. Uh, P R O D I G Y. I'm assuming oh, they have man. fire starting powers. <laughs> <laughs> you mm. laugh, but I'm sticking with this one. All right, you All right. Go, you're some go sort of fire related yeah. powers? Boy genius. I'm going to go with one of those like very small children with a huge head whose superpower is they're just really smart. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to say something along the lines of very smart, but they're like a pinball wizard kind of smart. <laughs> right. mm. Like mechanically smart. And also it sounds like they are either a very, very minor um, hero or like mastermind level villain. I say... 
I say minor villain. Minor mm. villain? Like this is someone that Spider-Man fought once and never appeared again. Yeah. I'm gonna go with associate level sidekick. Like, okay. like mm. you have a Justice League level organization and then this is one of the people who is in it and maybe they get a spinoff story but they are so many levels removed, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, and also, Prodigy was there. And he's like, hello, and then that's it. So it's interesting that you mentioned Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Prodigy, I that is not what I pictured. That's not is a in fact <laughs> Peter Parker. Because uh, after being framed for murder uh, of a small-time criminal and caught on camera attacking Norman Osborn, who at the time was the owner of the Daily Bugle, Peter Parker took on a different superhero identity to continue to be a superhero and clear his name. So as Prodigy, uh, Peter Parker, he has all his super, he, he has all his Spider-Man powers, but also the Prodigy suit is mystically enchanted to be bulletproof and he can glide on air currents. I'm noticing there's no feet. The feet are covered in this. Is this, <laughs> is this a Rob Liefeld joint? Wait, uh, there are not, not enough pouches. That, 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 yeah, that's me covered. Uh, no, it's, yeah, not enough pouches for Rob Liefeld. Mm -hmm. Although yeah. I never, I didn't, Spider-Man doesn't seem like he should be that incredibly yeah, shredded. No, yeah. shredded. Yeah. no feet, maybe the, no nipples. Maybe the suit is giving him some help in that regard. So, so yeah. where does yeah. the suit start and end there? Because it looks like he's mostly nude. Uh, no, no, that, I think that's all suit. He's not just incredibly <laughs> tan. <laughs> uh, he loves his bronzer. Peter Parker, the assification of Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah. So that would be, uh, and that, that, that would be, he would be a hero. Clearly. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, all right. Next one. Goldface. Oh, uh, mm, I'm thinking villain right off the bat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minor, mm -hmm. but villain. Yeah, full agree on that. Uh, Goldface, I feel... Oh. Metallurgy powers? Yeah, like al al alchemy. Alchemy? Yeah. My mind, base powers. My mind immediately went to like a Dick Tracy mafia dude named Goldface. Right. Mm, where okay. where his power is basically he wears a cheap suit and has a Tommy gun. His power is gun. His power yeah. is a bullet. Yeah, his power like he doesn't is, have anything to do with gold. No, he just likes gold. Yeah, it's like ah and it's gold faces here. Yeah. Right. I could I could see that. Yeah. I I'm going with Surge here. You're moving away from alchemy and going to just gangster. His so power we're, is just crime. It, it sounds like you're all on the same page that it's a villain. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you're correct in that it is a villain. All right. Uh, Goldface <laughs> is this guy. And is that is, is this a Jack Kirby joint? He's just a really he 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 has a gold thing. Keith Kenyon. He was a political science student Ooh. who, on a deep sea dive, was exposed to a radioactive chest of gold. Of course. Ra our radioactive X was like the origin story for a lot of people right, right. back in the day. Yeah, I mean, uh, America was a little messed up. About so that. he's got superhuman strength and invulnerability, which is like kind of baseline. For, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he glows gold, um, and later on, he started wearing gold armor and using a gun that sprays liquid gold. So it's not like he has any gold-related <laughs> powers. He was just like, His I power go. is bullet! He was like, I glow gold, I better go all in on this. Yeah. So I'll he, get gold armor and I'll make a gun. A gun that shoots shoot liquid gold, gold is just that's a so flame That's yeah. so expensive. Well, well was, maybe it wasn't <laughs> back then, right? Yeah. And he's making that poly sign like money, he's, right? He's, he's got he's to be constantly stealing things just to pay for his you know, previous yeah. crime. Yeah, exactly. He's constantly going to be in debt. And, I mean, like, if you get hit by a jet of molten gold, surely, like, you're going to be incinerated. But also, just like, it's heavy. It's got to yeah. pack some serious kinetic Someone's energy. like, couldn't you also, just... I want to know how, how a poli-sci student wound up on a deep sea expedition. Because that seems like an internship that I would sign up for, because I'm unqualified. Mm. But so is he. Yeah, it seems like he could use, like, liquid, like, like, molten lead would be just as, and people are like, why don't you use that? It's way cheaper. It's like, you just don't get my theme. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, or somebody, like, examining it is like, oh, it burns. Wait, this is bronze. You're a faker. <laughs> You're so, a phony. Yeah. To be fair, though, the one situation where this is relevant, he did fight Green Lantern. 
who's right. got the like bad against gold yellow stuff thing. Oh my god. Right? Wow. So that's like semi relevant. The perfect counter. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Human bomb. <laughs> uh, this is literally just a dude whose power is explosions. Anything he touches turns into a bomb. But ironically, is a hero, not a villain. You're describing. It's a tough hero gig. You're describing Gambit. <laughs> I am. I am describing Gambit. Ooh, ooh, then this is like the other studio's rip-off version of Gambit, mm. right? Because they mm. always have They're... weird mirror versions of each other, except they yeah. kind of suck. Yeah. It's not this guy. There was, there is a mutant whose mutant power is he can blow up. But he can only do it, he only's gonna be able he to do it, do it once. once. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's literally, he's like, this is the worst mutant ability ever. How did he <laughs> discover How it? How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Did he just I think like a little bit? He figured it out, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. or Professor X told him or something. But oh, anyway. I guess he looked in the psyche it, or whatever. If mm. this is an XB of Gambit, I'm going to say that they are neither in that they're villain hero-ish. Mm. Leaning heavier on the villain this time to make them different. Uh, well, Serge, I think you actually had it exactly right. Human <laughs> bomb. Uh, yeah, he's a, a chemist who is developing weapons during World War II. Uh, Roy Lincoln swallowed a sample of explosive 27 QRX to prevent it from being stolen by spies. The explosive concentrated itself in his hands, allowing Human Bomb to make anything he touches explode. Huh. Exactly what you said. Hero or villain? He's a villain. Oh, <laughs> I said hero. I almost nailed it. Wow. Wow. Huh. What power did you get when you were doing uh, chem work? Debt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude, did you, how, how many samples did you swallow though? None. <laughs> well, there's, there's your problem. Your problem yeah, right I, guess, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I got debt and a, a fun, a, 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 a profound understanding that the entire universe is just made up of electrostatic fields interacting and that there's no perimeter for anything. Uh, well, how about Robert, Rocket Red? Rocket Red. Is this a... S I don't know. This has to be a minor hero who shows up, I want to say alongside Surfer. Um, oh. Like Silver Surfer? Yeah. Mm. Possibly exploring space. Um, and their power is just like rocket propulsion. Hmm. That is red. What if they're a pilot? For whatever reason, my mm -hmm. mind immediately went to like the Red Baron. Okay. They're just a okay. dude okay. who has a red who has a red ship. Mm. Yeah. And their yeah. powers, their mechanic, right? <laughs> they just maintain this thing. I but see. I like where you're going. I like there, where you're going. There's that, that weird dichotomy of super. Like, there's like a whole chunk of heroes that are like just the guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a yeah, guy with I, a hobby. <laughs> yeah. I do like this. This strikes me as like an early space age comic hero, mm. Mm. or perhaps it's, pre space age. I'm I'm thinking. A, one of the Red Lantern Corps. Oh. Okay. That's my guess. That... Interesting. In, interesting. So, Rocket Red is a member of the Soviet Union's Rocket Red Brigade. Dmitry Pushkin uh, <laughs> was already a skilled soldier and pilot before joining the Justice League International. Pilot, okay. As okay. the Soviet Union's representative. Dmitry pilots the Rocket Red Battle Armor a powered armor designed by Green Lantern Kilowog. So we're kind of in the right area there. Huh. I don't know why a Green Lantern has, you think Green Lanterns wouldn't actually be that good at like designing physical things that, cause they're just like, yeah. I don't know, I just Ring. imagine yeah. it and it happens. <laughs> Isn't that how everybody makes things? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he got, he has flight and access to a bunch of what, he's sort of like an Iron Man type. He's just uh, okay. got a suit of armor and does yeah. stuff. The armor is in the shape of a plane. <laughs> You know what's funny? When we were having a conversation about a normal dude with a suit, I was actually going to say, like Iron Man. Mm, and yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Hornet. Oh, wait, sorry. I should show you the picture of this guy. Uh, Rocket Red. There he is. Mm. Looking pretty sweet. That looks like a Gundam. I mean, he's got Colossus arms and legs. Yeah, yeah. it's like, well, Colossus is also Soviet hero, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, all right, Hornet. Hornet. No color, no green. This is not green hornet. This is just hornet. Okay. 
a really annoying um, brass instrument player. <laughs> <laughs> Minor villain. Oh, horn, yeah, like horn, horn it. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. E-T-T-E. Yeah. Right. Oh, horn like and that. the hornets. I'm picturing a weird 80s level villain where they take a person and then like anamorph them halfway into a thing. And so right. they're like a, they're a villain who had a tra got tragically bitten by a radioactive hornet, and so they have the ability to like sting people and maybe also telepathically control mm. insects to mm. do their bidding. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's really yeah. strong. I like that. So like basically like the plot of the fly. Yeah, well, but well, with like a hornet, and you can yeah. you eat superheroes. Uh, we villain. we prefer to call this like a foil for Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funny you should mention Spider Man. <laughs> oh no. After being framed for murder of a small-time criminal and caught on camera attacking Norman Osborn, no, was who, was, who was the owner of the Daily Bugle at the time, Peter Parker took on a different super identity to continue. Uh, in addition to his normal... So this is yet an, another... <laughs> so at the, he took on a different super, two different superhero identities at Isn't the time. Is this the same universe? This is the same, this is the same incident. Going back to the well a little. So, in, according to uh, so, in, in addition to his Spider-Man powers, the Hornet suit allows him to fly, and he can fire bursts of bioelectric energy that can incapacitate some people. Bio. Can we see a photo of this? Uh, yes, yes. There he is as the Hornet. He's so Noted, swole. Noted, although not. I feel like yeah, not is... quite as swole. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would believe this is Peter Parker. The uh, the previous one, not Prodigy, mm, but like, I don't know, going back to the, well, a little often here. Yeah. Uncle Sam. Hero or villain? Villain. <laughs> <laughs> Power is the largest economy in the world that hadn't been disrupted by World War II. Oh. <laughs> um. Or the only economy in the world that hadn't been destroyed by World War II. Yeah. Uh, Villain. What if this is a weird Soviet, like Cold War era? It's just an old ripped man who mm. just like punches commies. <laughs> that, right. That, right. That's yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm right. And he like kind of looks like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we we. This is off-brand Captain America. Captain America was frozen in the ice. Yeah. We needed someone to step in and fill his shoes. And we... Just, not, we yeah. He's like your uncle. Yeah. We rip, created... Rip un uncle Sam. We created Uncle Sam. And, <laughs> you know, it didn't work out so hot. And, you know, he mainly just listened to Fortunate Son a lot. Mm. <laughs> I, I get the feeling this is, like, Captain America is having a dark night of the soul. Okay. He's really down in the blues, down in the dumps. And the government makes this guy appear that is like the spirit of America to get that back into Captain oh, America. Mm. So he's like Captain America's buddy, or like Captain America's like Muse. moral compass. Yeah. Moral. Ooh, yeah. All right, okay, all right. Yeah, the psychomachia. Well, I mean, Serge, you were a little bit right in terms of um, what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Colonel Sanders looking type. Yeah. It's goofy time. <laughs> Created by the founding fathers in an occult ritual at the founding of the United States of America. Uh -huh. Uncle Sam is the spiritual embodiment of America's idealism. <laughs> Uncle Sam is functionally immortal. Uh, and his strength and powers are directly proportional to America's belief in the ideals of freedom and justice. So kind of like Captain America's Tulpa. Yeah, so so the more people believe in America's ideals, the stronger he gets. It's gonna be a character in American Gods. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> He's got super strength, speed, stamina, and reflexes. He can teleport himself and others to a pocket dimension called the Heartland. <laughs> Is it just like cornrows? No, that's Ohio. Uh, and my Nebraska. favorite, my favorite yeah. of his abilities, he always has perfect knowledge of the location of patriotic objects like the Declaration of Independence. Patriotic objects. So he's he's Nicholas Cage's worst nightmare. Yeah. He always knows where the Declaration of Independence is. So villain. 
Uh, surprisingly enough, he's a hero. Mm, I believe oh. he actually was in an episode of Batman Brave and the Bold, the cartoon. Because they love messing with like weird, weird, uh, 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 random superheroes. And no, and no irony in there, eh? Nope. No, no self-examination. Nope. This oh, is straight yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Just... All right. Uh, fifty percent Chad. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is the greatest name I've ever heard. My hero. Um, fifty percent Chad. Oh. If it helps, it's with a like fi like five zero percentage thing. I don't know why that would help. This man harnesses the power of half acidness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know who, I know what he looks like, and uh, you're not far off, Cameron. <laughs> awesome. All right, go with me on this journey. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tarkov players couldn't have invented the word Chad out of nowhere, right? <laughs> so, they... in Tarkov... Sorry, wait, you, you think the word Chad didn't exist before Escape from Tarkov? Well, I'm thinking about the context. Oh, but they also call Gideon Chad. Oh, crap, there's a whole genealogy of Chads. Chad is a... It's... <laughs> It's a name. <laughs> it's a oh, name, man. Serge. You know, Chad... Not anymore. Not, no, no one's naming their kids Chad in 2022. Cut to, Wait, really? Cut to Chad Kruger, just <laughs> yeah, shedding one tear. Oh yeah, Nickelback. Ah, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> go on. <laughs> you had a theory. So fifty percent Chad, okay, is a dude who walks down the street wearing way too much body armor. And is inexplicably having like 17 guns and combat knives and grenades and stuff attached to him. Mm. Just, what? just one fifty percent too much for every scenario. So Iron I feel Man, like that would be like 150 percent Chad. Yeah, yeah. He's got too much Chad. Huh. Like, 50%... although that's assuming the right amount of Chad is zero percent, which could <laughs> yeah. be true, I guess. I, I suppose. <laughs> 50% Chad seems about regular for streetwear, honestly. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to Chad too hard. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say he's in the middle of being a villain and a hero because he just can't commit. Mm. He's a person who wants to be a hero but always gets it wrong. Mm, mm. So, yeah, uh, uh, Cam, it's, it's funny that you should say he is somebody who uh, uh, half asks things. Mm -hmm. Um that's 50% Chad. <laughs> this is from The Tick, isn't it? He is the lower half. This is from DC Comics. No, wait, then he, he's, uh, and he is in fact a villain, I believe, of the Doom Patrol. He's even in the pose. He became part, so 50% Chad is a disembodied pair of legs, feet, and a pelvis that has no, <laughs> and no pants. That has that became part of the Brotherhood of Nada, which was a evil group that fought the Doom Patrol. Apparently, um, as the only thing listed in terms of powers is his smell is so noxious that he can repel people using just his stench. Does he fart? Is that his ability? Just dirty or is it a socks. Hygiene issue. Dirty socks. Yeah. Can't clean them. So don't yeah. wash his legs. I, I love I love the um, the names of heroes where the the hero the name of the hero is like literally a descript also a descript it's like you're thinking about it too much. Yeah, it's literally a description of what he is. Uh, ricochet. I think I might actually know who this is. Oh. Going by. My limited knowledge in the comics, it's a guy that can shoot a gun that never misses, and he's a villain. So isn't it Bullseye? I guess Bullseye doesn't shoot. There's, like, there's, a, couple, there's a couple of people. I think there's people. a couple. There's a couple of people. <laughs> they they like, actually yeah. joked about that in like the uh, in the Suicide Squad movie. Okay. That there's like two there's like two people, uh, Will Smith's character in the first Suicide Squad movie mm -hmm. and uh, Idris Elba in the second Suicide Squad movie are different characters mm. who both have that ability. Huh. Neither of who are, are Ricochet. <laughs> so maybe we have a third one. Is this like maybe. MMA fighters named Pitbull? They're just everywhere, right? Like, 
Uh, okay, yeah, it's just a dude who inexplicably has like a, a bullseye on his forehead or something like that, right? Right. That's, 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 there's that, a guy that, called Bullseye who does have that. <laughs> Dang it, Paul! <laughs> he's, he's a daredevil villain. Mm, mm. <laughs> See, I would almost say that this sounds like a G.I. Joe. Oh. Yeah, yeah, with a name like that. Yeah. Could be, yeah, yeah. All but right. like, you know, he would have to be in Cobra. Hero or villain? So you're going with villain? Yeah, yeah, I'll go with, you know what? Sure, why not? The stakes have, are, are, are incredibly low here. G.I. Joe villain. Mm. All right. After being framed for murder for no. the, of a small no. time criminal and caught on camera attacking Norman Osborne, who was the, uh, who was the owner of the Daily Bugle at the time, Peter Parker took on another superhero identity. <laughs> Did to continuous crime fighting. Uh, he also, this is again the same incident. He took on three identity, different identities. Big economy, man. Uh, so aside from his Spider-Man powers, as Ricochet, he can shoot uh, metal discs that shoot and bounce off walls and objects to strike enemies. Uh, oh yeah. Can you direct fire them or can he only hit with ricochets? Look at that one. But the hair! Now that, that is a Rob Liefeld pose. Yeah. That yeah. like, jumping in midair move. And massive, massive thighs. Uh, yeah, yeah, also, yeah, where is he? I guess he's wearing a wig, because that is definitely not Peter Parker's hair. And he can't, if he's changing, it's not like he could die it if he's changing between like three other... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. God. <laughs> that poor man. <laughs> uh, Maybe it's time to take a break, Peter. Yeah. Just lie low. Shrunken bones. Hmm. I'm going to say they are not a hero or a villain. They are um, a civilian. <laughs> Caught in the crossfire of hero and villain actions. Oh no. I can. Oh, like, you know, if, if their skeleton just got shrunk inside their body and their skull was like now recessed inside their head and the face was just like, yeah, help me. Oh. <laughs> Whatever reason, I'm thinking at the end of Beetlejuice mm -hmm. where oh, oh, the, the, like, yeah. they, they sprinkle the powder and it like shrinks the head. Yeah. So some type of weird person caught in a crossfire with like, is it voodoo magic? Is that what they, what he gets hit with at the end of it? Yeah. Voodoo in Beetlejuice, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I like a villain who has, or yeah, someone who's been caught in some kind of mystical crossfire or shrink, po possibly shrink ray based crossfire. Yeah. And or they're the one like who does villainy. it. Oh, what yeah. if they're like Ant-Man and have the ability to change their size? But or only their bones. Yeah. <laughs> only their bones. <laughs> only their bones. But teeth aren't bones, so those would stay the same size. Guys, we're actually in a the pretty much the right area. Oh, the no. magic. This is shrunken bones. <laughs> oh god! Oh, the skin. Gerald Morgan was a physicist who attempted to replicate Hank Pym's size-changing particles, aka Ant Man. Unfortunately, his attempt to replicate pin particles was imperfect and only succeeded at shrinking his bone, <laughs> leaving him with the appearance of having too much skin. Oh, I don't like it. He has no powers. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a brilliant physicist who had he assisted. Uh, oh, he assisted Doctor Bong in his attempt to take over the world what? by building the cosmic bomb. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna need some help from Dr. Bong later after this. So yeah, he's not, he's, t I guess maybe he's a villain because he helped out a villain, but he's really just a scientist who t has two small bones. I can't believe how close we were to being right on that. He's like a little work. skeleton. I don't know how much of his body take is a skeleton. I'm concerned whether he's just like a little teeny weeny skeleton inside his, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, like, like Krang. Yeah. yeah, it's very disturbing. Shredder. <laughs> Dr. Midnight. Uh, and Dr. M-I-D hyphen N-I-T-E. Midnight. 
Okay. So if not knight like guy with a sword. Okay. Um, Dr. Hmm. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde style late night costume superhero. Like tuxedo knight, <laughs> like tuxedo mask. I don't know why. But split personality. Hmm. So the, like he's a, at night he's a superhero and but during the day he's, he's a, a doctor. regular guy. I'm just thinking of like a talk show host gone evil. <laughs> Maybe anti hero. Anti hero, mm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, anti hero. Um but that is such a strange way of spelling that. It has yeah. to be on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Can he only exist at exactly midnight? Is he an instantaneous <laughs> superhero? <laughs> oh, it's like the the Cinderella story. Yeah. Where at the clock of exactly midnight it changes, the illusion falls apart. Mm. Yeah. He gets to be a superhero for precisely one minute. Oh. Uh You're kind of in the right area. How? How? Why? Go so on. <laughs> here's Dr. Midnight. That's uh, Robin! <laughs> Brilliant physician Charles McNighter. I, by the way, I think there's more creativity in in uh, superheroes like civilian names than there mm. is in, like the the like pun civilian names are amazing. Anyway, he was blinded when a grenade exploded in his face while he was trying to save the life of a man who was going to testify against the known gangster. After intense physical therapy, McNighter discovered that he had more stamina at night and began a regimen of intense physical training. After an owl flew into his window, he discovered that he could see perfectly in the dark, but was completely blinded by light, and then decided to become Dr. Midnight. Uh, Dr. Midnight is one of the world's foremost physicians and surgeons for metahumans, and he also has an arsenal of blackout bombs, which uh, release a pitch black gas that blinds his enemies. Huh. Sure, why not? <laughs> A weird tuxedo so he can only was, see oh, he no. can only see in the dark, but not during the day. <laughs> the cape, okay, okay. So he's like the preeminent doctor to the heroes, or is it villains? Uh, to metahumans, I guess. Mm. Either mercurial, perhaps. Dusk. This is another Peter it's Parker. Un, un, unrelated, un, unrelated to Doctor Midnight, mm. but dusk. So being inadvertently framed. For the assault. Yeah. <laughs> this is who Peter Parker attacked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think this is um, Spider Woman's new identity. Oh, uh, the, like, the whole well, thing. The, like all the spiders. Yeah. People had to switch identities. Spiders yeah. people, yes. <laughs> spider spider folk. I yeah. think this is a like blade knockoff. I think this is a vampire superhero. Uh, oh. Because dusk, yeah. that's my yeah. guess. She, she is a yeah minor hero. I got she, I got female from it the name yeah. as well. <clears throat> well, Cam, you were right. It's also Peter Parker. <laughs> no, <laughs> four. The same incident. So my joke. It's four identities. Yeah. So, it's not uh, so he's got his regular Spider-Man abilities. Uh, he can also become invisible in shadows and glide How? short distances. How is he? He has spider-related powers. Where is all this coming from? So I went. I, so the deal is. Uh, so he was framed. Peter Parker was framed by, uh, you know, then this whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, and then he's like, I can't be Spider-Man anymore. So, but. Here's the brilliant thing. Mm -hmm. I can't be Spider-Man anymore, but if another hero, if I change my name and like become, if and another there, hero one -one, who has spider-type yeah. powers suddenly appears, people are gonna be like, well, that's clearly Spider-Man. Just So he's like, ah, I will be four heroes, <laughs> but different, I will be in fact two heroes and two villains. See, Dusk and Ricochet, he actually played as villains even though they were still like stopping crimes, but he tried to pretend that they were villains so he could infiltrate the criminal underworld to try to clear the name of Peter Park. 
it was very confusing. Yeah, yeah. Just playing heel there for a while. Uh, yeah. Apparently, there's an there's an ongoing there's like a jo ongoing thing among, among the Spider-Man fans that Peter Parker like just gets bored and doesn't like <laughs> change his stuff all the time. Anyway. Oh. That was the last. That was the last one. Was, that was the final. That was that was our wow. final. All right. Our final question. <laughs> did any of us score a single point? Who we, can yeah, tell? Some of you got some. We some nailed of you some got, of those. Okay. okay. Some of you got surprisingly close. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that actually reminds me. There, there's the the thing of like the like multicolor Batman. Oh, you know the, the there's Ooh. pictures of like Batman in different colored outfits. It's like that is so weird. That's a totally bizarre thing that's in in the comics. It's like Batman in a pink outfit and Batman in a yellow outfit. Huh. Uh, and that was a part of a story where uh, Robin got his leg or his arm broken, mm -hmm. and so he had his arm in a cast. Uh, and people were like, "But they're gonna." Batman was like, "They're gonna notice that Dick Grayson now has his arm in a cast when they know that Robin had his arm in a cast. That's gonna be suspicious. So what I'll do is I'll." Batman will just start wearing these totally ridiculous, crazy outfits, and that's what everyone will look at. <laughs> God, <laughs> man, it's kind of brilliant. A, what a good guy! <laughs> yeah, willing to take the heat for Robin like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that was Pooper Heroes. Once again, thanks <laughs> to uh, Gru or Eaten by a Gru. He goes by very names that have uh, uh, changed over the time, but usually involves the word Gru. Uh, thank you for delving into the amazing uh terrible terrible superheroes uh and uh now let's uh go and look at some uh people doing a different thing in front of powerpoint presentations hey folks it's time once again for some powerpoint karaoke now you may not remember what PowerPoint karaoke is, because it's been a hot minute. It's when uh, we're going to get together a bunch of presenters, and they are going to present for you a deck of slides not seen before. Uh, if you wonder what that might look at, well, uh, I'd like to invite you all to my TED Talk. Folks, we live in unprecedented times right now, and there are all sorts of issues that compete for our attention from top to bottom, from soups to nuts. But I'm here to tell you today that there is one thing that we can all work on together and really, really make a difference in the world. And that is the thrilling potential of steam. <laughs> steam runs everything. Everything comes from steam, from steam boy to steam man. You can just get hot and feel the pressure of steam. How can this help you in your day-to-day -day life? Well, let's discuss steam. This, this isn't steam. This is just water vapor. Uh, an abomination in the eyes of our high pressure Lord. What we need is something that's going to be able to fill the oceans, fill the forests, fill our tanks and fill our hospitals with the power to heal, the power to heal the forests by making them more pliable and more able to bend to the pressures of today. Filling our tanks with, well, an incompressible fluid that will help chugga-chugga us down the line towards progress and fill our hospitals with these Well, they'll fill the hospitals with steam, and the steam's ability to kill any sort of organism which may cause a problem to another human being, miraculous. And all for a very pretty small penny. Now, if you're in heavy industry, like I am, you already know about steam. Let's just, uh, let's kick back there and uh, drink the coffee together. But if you are new to steam in the world of recreational, let me tell you, have I got some news for you. <laughs> Your day-to-day -day life is going to become nothing but recreation. Why, deep cleaning your carpets? A breeze, a very hot breeze, mind you, but a breeze nonetheless. Discussion about steam is one of the most important things about steam because steam can be networked like people. Steam can be piped like people. 
Steam, well, can be punked, like people. <laughs> and soon <laughs> shall thy arm unconquered steam afar drag the slow barge or drive the rapid car, or on wide waving wings expanded bear the flying chariot through the fields of air. So saith Erasmus Darwin, the Botanic Gardens, part one, of the economy of vegetation. Vegetation incalculably linked to steam. Why, how else would you be able to choke back those Brussels sprouts if not had they been steamed first? <laughs> <laughs> now let's turn this into this. With what you say? With, 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 with words? No. With action? No. But through the passive power of steam. <laughs> if you're worried about steam, really, it's, it's nothing to worry about. It's just simply something that's going to further the expansion and the inflation that we all feel within our society, economically, physically, and sociologically. Do we have any questions? Yes, you there. Do you have a spouse or significant other? Excellent question. Next presenter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, like this? Like this, right? Like that? Okay. <clears throat> uh, hey, shut up. No, no, sh sit down, shut up, look. <clears throat> Hi, class. Uh, your, uh, your teacher, Mr. Stitz, you know, you know Stitz, Stitty's a friend of mine, uh, he can't make it, so he's asked me to come in, uh, and cover for health class. You guys are what, like grade eight, right? Grade eight? Good, I got it, all right. He, he gave me some notes. Um, I, I can't make heads or tails of these things, but we're starting our unit, uh, God, I'm not even allowed to say this anymore, like the, the school boards put all these rules in place, and... So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna work off Stiddy's notes. Um, I'm gonna just have to make up some euphemisms for some stuff. And you're just gonna have to be cool, okay? Like, I know that you, you guys know you already have your own euphemisms and stuff. So today, uh, I'm here, I'm gonna talk to you about this. Uh, my name's Mr. Bond, uh, and we're gonna talk about how you can let masonry uh, be your guide in the bedroom or behind the bleachers or wherever it is you kids do it these days. First things first, I want to talk about um, important figures when we talk about masonry, right? That uh, there's uh, Alina Portland Cement. Uh, she was a worker on a barge. She used to deliver uh, cauliflowers to people. Uh, and she discovered, uh, let's, let's call it the masonry spot. And, <laughs> you know, that's, which is cool. It's a real thing. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. Uh, but yeah, Donna Breeze Block, uh, she's responsible for all those commercials where they pour blue water onto stuff. And uh, you've probably seen some of those commercials already. You've probably passed some of those uh, items around and everyone got a chance to play with them and like stick them to the desk and stuff. And I think you all got your own blue water as well. So that was cool. She invented the blue water so we can show how that process works. I, uh, you got, you got to give it up for, give, give it up for Donna, right? Give it up for Donna. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, that's good. All right. So. So, do you know what a, a masonry is, right? When I've asked people, I get yes and no for the, for the most part, right? You get about a third of the people all kind of waffling between knowing what that means. And I, we all know what, what I mean. So when I say masonry, right, we all know what I'm talking about. Okay, we all know what I'm talking about. So, okay. So, my son doesn't allow me any masonry. That's what happens when you ask like older adults because they're, you know, kids like you keep giving adults like me shit about it. But I, I got needs and I got to get some, some of the masonry from time to time. You know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So is there a way to have all the masonry you want but avoid having to download YouTube videos? Sorry, you TikTok videos. Whatever you want to call it, wherever you guys go to, to get your masonry, uh, can, you, can you avoid having to actually download? Yeah, we, you can stream this stuff. There's all sorts of websites. Most of them have X's in front of the names. But 
you get go pick one of those sites. You don't have to download anything. Get yourself a VPN, like uh, like NordVPN, our sponsors this week here. You can save thirty percent <laughs> off of uh, any package that you want to buy uh, for uh, for two years of service. Uh, just give them the code Mr. Bond, and they'll cut me in for ten percent. That's how I that's how I make my money going around doing this. snitty has got. Stitty's got no no idea that I'm that I've, that I've been doing this, but it's fine. It's cool. You kids are hip. You know what VPNs are. Uh, but yeah, you should be streaming that shit. You should not be like, you know, don't let your parents catch you uh, doing it. You don't want to have any history on the computer. Use private browsing sessions. Um, have you, well, show of hands, have any of you used masonry in your private life? Woo! Yeah, all right, yeah, all right, good. I like to hear this. It's good. It's exciting, right? Yeah, it's, you're young. You know, you're feeling that pressure too. Your hormones are churning in your body and you're like, man, I gotta stack some bricks, right? <laughs> right? I gotta get out there and I gotta lay a little mortar, right? We know how it is. You know, that's how, that's how I've been. You know, it's how I still am for the most part. I'm getting old, so, you know, it's harder to think about, but you, you get to a point. Anyway, no, it's, uh, when you think about it, we're just another brick in the wall, right? We're just, Humanity has built its evolution brick by brick on top of everybody just piling bricks. That's how it works. And when you get together and start knocking bricks together, you know, next thing you know, you make more bricks and the wall gets bigger. And, you know, humanity kind of, we, we rise out from the ground. We make, you know, nice structures like this school that we're all sitting in right now, you know. So I like to think of this as being, it's, 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 it's part of who we are as humans and you should embrace that and embrace each other or learn to embrace yourself and get a really good idea of the kind of masonry you you like um, you can be messy and sloppy about it no one's going to give you much shit about it i don't think because it's for the most part it's going to hold you all together like ultimately you know th this is like there's stuff's going to get in and out of there a little bit and and that's a problem so you should you know practice safe masonry right always have a hard hat and you know bring a hammer that kind of thing. And lay your bricks nicely and neatly and ask your partner, you know, for more bricks. As you're laying more bricks, so make sure they bring you the mortar. And then if you need to, like, when, when you're done, if you, if you got to break that stuff down, it's still legal. It's still technically legal. If you got to break it all down, it's still technically legal. No one's going to say boo to you about it one way or the other. You can, you can stop whatever masonry you need to stop. There's pills for that. Uh, so this is a nice little, like, I had a different movie here before. Uh, and and Stiddy doesn't like it when I show it anymore. So so I just I just we, we show this now because it's two guys you know really working together, really like getting in there you know shoveling the stuff and throwing it back and forth and like, they don't even spill a drop. And I'm told that the Catholics are are down with that as well. That's what they they don't want you to spill a drop. In conclusion. Uh, you can build a wall for yourself and just do it on your own and just go up and down the streets and you know that's fine because we have the, the laws don't prevent that. Weirdly, I looked into it. Uh, you can just get yourself a nice seat and just sit down and drop all the bricks that you want. And again, no one's going to give you a problem with that. Or you can join the Freemasons, uh, but I'm not going to advocate for that. If you want to be a Freemason, you got to ask one. You know, I'm not I'm not here to tell you one way or the other. So, do I have any questions? Questions from the audience. Uh, I got a question. A question. When's the last time you Mason read? Uh, God. Uh, well, let's just say that I Mason read with a group of people uh, three months ago, but I laid some bricks myself last night. <laughs> no more questions. Sweet. I'm gonna give it to the other presenter. All right. Thanks very much. Well, hey, kids. <laughs> Are all your parents dragging you to this presentation? And you're bored of hearing about all these things that you don't really know much about. Well, I'm the last presenter. And I'm here to show you exactly what the kids are wanting today. Oh God. How I could, how I eat pizza. Confession of, of, of a pizza. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I eat pizza fine. This is just the, I, I've, I, you know, I had a pizza for lunch today. No, no, no. I, confessions of a pizza. For you see, I am a pizza man and I've come to real life 
to show you all the things that come together with being a pizza man. I'm cheesy, I'm square, and I like getting spun around. And those are like the top three things that I want every day. Fit. Now, there's a, there's a good point to be made. Do you know how to make pizza dough? Oh, you do. No, actually, my loved one doesn't allow me to talk about that. So I can't let you in on that secret, but some of you might know. And a lot of, and a portion of you don't know, but my wife, I asked three people and my wife counts as two. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so that, that made it all, uh, next slide. Uh, now, a lot of people say, now that you're a pizza man, how do you get involved in the regular society? And kids want to know, kids got to get jobs so that they can support their subscriptions to various subs, uh, services. Um, so, I mean, I've made some, I've, you know, I've had a couple of tough gigs in my life. Uh, for a while, I was a chair, um, and it was at a cat cafe, and I just had to, just, I just had to be there for the cats to lay on. Um, it's, a, it's it, you know, you start off small, but then, nope. <laughs> now, life hack. Maybe becoming a pizza is a little bit too much for you. But you can always just be pizza dough because pizza doesn't have to just be, dough doesn't have to just be pizza. You could be a flatbread. Uh, you could be um, somebody fooling themselves that they're having less carbs at Subway. Uh, many, many different options. Uh, now, would you like to make pizza dough? Most people will say yes. Mo a couple, no, wait, in fact, le the least amount of people <laughs> don't want it. And that's okay, I'm here to change people's minds. You, Cause you're saying, wait, no. Yes, a lot of people want to. <laughs> no, an overwhelming amount of people don't want to. So I'm here to change your mind. But can I just make pizza bread? Now, if you come here, and one of you calzone mother effers have come into my presentation, I've got one thing to say to you. Why would people like me ever make homemade pizza hut pan pizza? <laughs> When I could just be a calzone? That's a very good question. Stop ordering from Pizza Hut. <laughs> Do it, be better, you know? You don't have to order from Pizza Hut when places like Pizza Bike uh, exist. <laughs> this is why pizzas are great. You can ride a bike on me. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't be like this guy. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I don't want to be pizza no more. <laughs> I ran into some bad things. <laughs> you know, I had to make a quick buck. Um, we're just gonna move on. Now, key points to end. You can start off as a regular pizza, but sometimes people are gonna ask you to do some freaky shit. <laughs> but you become a May May. And through that, in the end, maybe a cat will sit on you. Mm -hmm. And that's the real victory for us all, isn't it? Any questions? Chicago? <sighs> Tavern you know, style or deep dish? I'm going to talk, I'm going to be real for you for a moment. Deep dish kicks ass. <laughs> I don't care what any of you yeah! say. Chicago <laughs> deep dish is good pizza. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's more than pizza lasagna. It's a piece of, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind <laughs> if you say any of that stuff again. Any other questions? Great. Kids, you can find me at TikTok at Pizza Man. And you can find yourself a plethora of more funny moments on this week's Highlight Reel. Brief note, just, just for chat's information, this person is a criminal and you should not listen to her. That door leads to the west exit. But before you leave... Oops. <laughs> we have much to discuss. Right. <laughs> I still can't go west! Cory gets mad when I come in here when she goes to the bathroom and doesn't know that I'm here, which makes it even more fun to be here when she's not here. More of the leaky village. Here come the dogs. Oh, no. No! Well, at least I have companionship. <laughs> at the start of your main phase, 
Uh, I mean, I guess it's... Uh, it's fine. It's whatever. Fade out of the gate? They don't have it. Fucking kidding me. <laughs> oh my god! Unreal! <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I was reading this book, um, and it, it is a uh, post apocalyptic post-apocalyptic it's post zombie plague basically mm -hmm. and one of the characters at one point says but things are better now because nobody could make her play settlers of Catan again <laughs> the chat delay is just a bit too much for me to remember why people are screaming my name sometimes uh doc sir that's a seagull Oh, now it's a duck. Yeah, okay. I have made a mistake with Google. Oh no. What did you look up? Slime song? We'll talk about it later! <laughs> okay. Let's bring in... I was gonna say let's bring our friends and now there's a loading screen. I didn't do anything. Let's find out if they did. Hello? Yeah, bye! Oh. Yeah, get out of here! Why'd you leave the crew? You've been disconnected. Oh, I just, I just got going. <laughs> I'm having some audio issues. Let me Google sounding and see if I can figure out. <laughs> it's okay. I was no! reading fan fiction once, and uh, it was tagged water sports, and the uh, they were playing oh, no. polo. <laughs> Corey, thread the needle through that mountain that's coming up here. No, please don't. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I believe. Just thread I the needle, do it. dude. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah, let's go. Uh, All right, you're gonna, you're wanna, gonna want to start turning. There turning. You go. I got the har har harpoon to help. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> let's go! Let's go! Helmsman Corey threaded the needle. Pulse can be nasty. Ignore the rock. What? <laughs> See, I knew you were getting ahead of yourself when you said we, we must have learned all the mechanics. Oh. Like, there's so many things they could probably do to us. Balls be nasty! Uh, Kirby Tronic, welcome back for 34. Oh shit! The Writer Elf, welcome back for 45. The Rush <laughs> one... J Jesus. <laughs> Dude, you okay? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> and, um... Omnath, <laughs> I think, I guess. <laughs> and these two. No! Oh, the two <laughs> My boys! And yeet! <laughs> and yeet! Ah, oh, damn it! Someone stabbing a melon? No! <laughs> no more mechanics game! These balls fly in an arc twice as slow as normal oh. balls. Oh, you know what that Fuck means. Fuck you. Then yeah. there'll be speedy balls later. Well, well, because they'll come up probably at the same time as one's coming. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Backwards balls are coming next. Don't, don't make that happen, no smoke. <laughs> well, so far this has been pretty oh, easy. Oh, whoa, a different, either a different band or a different album. Uh, Satoru. We've hit 20 seconds with nothing happening. Good. Oh, damn it. Ha! Ah! Fast travel! Ho! Oh. You sons of bitches. Do 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 why are you? I mean, if that isn't the perfect end of the stream, I don't know what is. I'm an illustrator. I can do anything I want. Like, watch this. Fuck. 
Are you ready? Born ready. You ready? Three, two, one, go. At what point is it too early for me to start making excuses? Too. That would be bad. Yes. What's the picture? Jesus! Oh. oh no! A hacking chonker! No! No, not a chonker! <laughs> ah. What? Where would that come where from? Where did it even come from? It's the middle of the day! We privileged few will Nobody noticed. Whoa! Whoa! Let's go. Oh. Wait, Team Surge. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Paul, Sarah? <laughs> Salt Field and Team Surge. Do I get those bits? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. That's a lot of bitties. <laughs> what do you mean, shrug emoji, Sarah? <laughs> what if I was on top of you? What about then? Huh? Oh! MLG! Yes! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> oh, I had no doubt in my mind we'd be able to get there, but. Ah, oh, so good. A feeling of con okay. continuous progress yes. and then making it. Ah, oh. oh, <sighs> as good as a warm hug. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, 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 keep. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Nice. Good job. Wait, are you digging a hole while I'm dancing, James? Uh, good no. Good job. Good job. No, that James, was no. That. And barrels is just kind of what I expect Graham to look like one day. <laughs> just really round and sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> With little droopy glasses. You can't catch me. You want to hear my Nelson? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the highlight reel. <laughs> uh, kind of a bad day for getting things inside of me in this office. And I know how that sounds. Shut up. Do you beach? Yeah. <sighs> Adam is Heather. <laughs> uh huh. Oh. Doesn't taste that much different than regular Coke, actually. Yeah. It's like, there's a hint of like a little fruity action in there, but barely. I don't even know what. I don't know. There's an aftertaste of burnt cinnamon. Space. A little fruity, it turns out. Not a little bit. A little fruity. I was trying to think of it like in an idol context. It's mm. generally like a crossover uh, promotion. I think in the rap community, they call that a joint. Because that's how you roll it up. And you, yeah, I, I honestly, it. usually Dre is involved. <laughs> I'm turning off the music. We need to hear this. Uh, Surge? Um. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the stream. It's very... Well, thank you very, very, very much. And um, what we're going to do today is uh, a perfectly mapped out, meticulous stream in which we do not stray from the schedule whatsoever. <laughs> um, every hour is completely mapped out to the letter of what we're going to do. Uh, love, I'm going to get a little bit uncomfortable if we stray from that. <laughs> oh, wait. So did you Google magic wand? I... No. But that was one of the results of what I did Google, okay? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that I, I Google uh -huh. name name of yeah. popular sex toys. <laughs> and oh. let me be honest, what they returned were not names. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I think we're far enough into the 
into the thing that uh, we won't get demonetized if I mention that this card is called the Dakmore Storm Shitter. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Ow. There we go. I pooped. Aloy, Aloy did, did potty. We'll get back as quick as we can. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, it'll just be a couple seconds. But just you know. like this. Paul. <laughs> oh. Johnny, go. Hey, Aloy. Well, that was easy. <laughs> you did we it. did it. Look at us, champions, just sitting here. Come on, gentlemen, get a move on. I tried to tail cut. I, if I crouch, can I get out? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Hey, honey! Did you know that for every clockwise gear, there is a counterclockwise one? He said it's fucked up. Uh, I'll tap down your enchantment. Yeah. Draw. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cranny Kitch. Game two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it seems like a fine time to remind everybody that, uh... Oh, there we go. Um, LRR MTG, our weekly arena stream here, is brought to you by Hi. CardKingdom.com By the kind of folks at CardKingdom.com Holy crap, we can buy JetSki.com! I know what we're doing with all these bits! <laughs> not even a JetSki, just a JetSki website? It just isn't... It's not even a JetSki website, it's a it's, JetSki it's a, URL. It's a landing page! We can buy this! We can make an offer! Paul, quickly, how much money did we just make? <laughs> offer! Holy God! Never mind, we don't have enough bids. Wait, how much is the website? Minimum bid on jetski.com, 70,000 US dollars. <laughs> We're gonna need another punch and chunk. We're gonna need several more punch and chunks. <laughs> Thank you for the five years. Oh, Lord Wait, why Lord. am I the straight man here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to Will It Slam. Now we've got a very important test that we're gonna be running today. Many of you might know what a Tim Tam Slam is. If you don't, don't worry, we'll do a demonstration. But is it limited to just the Tim Tam? Today, we have provided, provided? Or pr we are provided. Procured? We're providing you <laughs> with some intense Tim Tam Slam science, where we're gonna try slamming a number of different objects and seeing will it slam. Now, I know there's some controversy. Some people are trying to claim ownership over the Tim Tam Slam. Uh, B. Jin Ian, quick, really, where is it from? What's the history of the Tim Tam Slam? It's largely Italian, is it not? Yeah, yeah from the continent. Yeah, It's, it's exactly. a continental. It's, it's a continental thing. It's yeah. a coffee thing. It makes a lot of sense. Espresso Tim Tam <laughs> Slams, it's Italian. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we should start off with a demonstration of what a traditional Tim Tam Slam is. Yes, please, because I am not good at these. Oh, great. All right, so we have, Ian, what did you pick us up here? Uh, classic Tim Tams, the original. Mm. It, it's usually continental. Uh, oh, you got them in English, too. Yeah. yeah. Without that's the Italian good. packaging. Yeah, that's good. Very fancy. Ah. Please help yourself. Uh, Choose your fighter. I'll take this guy. Choose your fighter. I just want to eat it. I just want to eat it right now. I know. <laughs> All right, so real quick. Important things to note about a Tim Tam Slam. You are not trying to use this as a straw. Oh. The, the goal here is to bite off. Just don't don't overbite. Just a little bit of the corner. Mm -hmm. corner. That, this is the important thing too. I, you, you were talking earlier about biting the ends off. Mm -mm. No, no, corner. Little bite off the other corner. Mm. Which other corner? So angles, opposite oh. angles. Okay, yeah, I can do and that. And what you're trying to do, much like the image there, what you're trying to do is create an opening, but leave as much structure as possible. You yep. want a Tim Tam parallelogram. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Now, what you're gonna go 
is you're going to lower it down, kind of like a straw, and mm -hmm. bring bring the coffee to you, oh, not okay. the other way around. Great. And you want to suck in until you've almost used it as a straw, but it's going to quickly start to dissolve and melt. <laughs> so just before the whole thing falls apart, uh -huh. you need to eat. You need to yes. slam the whole thing. Okay. So suck and then slam. I would suggest actually that my personal technique is to continue the suction throughout the procedure. Mm. Do not stop okay. the suck. Okay. All right. And Tim, Tam, I guess that's what you say before you do it. Whoa. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. Do you have some, do you have wow. some napkins to your mind? It's good. No, it's work. really good. Oh, it is the absolute best <clears throat> way to get Tim Tams into you in a speedy <clears throat> fashion. Well, that worked so well. Yeah. Right. Huh. And if you did it, if you did it perfectly, you got a little bit in your mouth. Uh, do you want to pass the fresh coffee over? Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. should get warm coffee in your mouth. No. But also melted chocolate and wafer and all kinds of delicious flavors all at the same time. It's like eating like like, like a uh, unmixed brownie. Mm-hmm. So, what we each did. In secret from each other is we went to the store and we got two objects that we thought would be interesting to try and slam, to ask the question of will it slam. Not good. Interesting. <laughs> so, sorry, Ob food objects? Well, I did the food <laughs> objects, right? <laughs> but it didn't, it was not just, I don't know what it could be. It could be anything. The idea is, will it slam? Mm -hmm. So it's not a straw. It needs to be able to hold coffee in it. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pick an object at random from this box. But before we do this, I want to talk about the objects. So I picked things that I don't know if they'll work, but I think they'll at least be delicious. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought about will it pair oh. well with coffee? Was oh. that your justification? Yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> Good tasting was not part of my... Uh, Oh, uh, uh, strategies here. Okay, mine was more trying to adhere to the uh, to, to the spirit of the Tim Tam slammingness, which is that you, saturation. Well, that, that you bite an end off of a object and you are able to pass coffee through it and allow yourself to consume it ah. uh, with the coffee. Because I didn't know how this actually worked because I've never <laughs> done it properly. I purchased edible objects. Okay, good, 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 good start. That technically you could fill with coffee. Okay, okay. So, very important to note here, very important to note here, we are going to be selecting an object at random. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance we could get our own object. So we didn't want to go too hard to try and just goozle everybody, because you might goozle yourself. Yeah, ab absolutely, because I was going to pick a wooden spoon. Mm. Yeah. Uh, my, my Technically, you could suck coffee through it, it'd just take a long time. My initial thought was baguette. Ah! Oh! Again, the similar problem. Much longer to a yeah. three feet of bread versus three inches of cookie. I'm just going to top you up a little bit oh, here with some man. hot and fresh coffee. Just thank like, you to Cameron. <laughs> the whole time you're just <laughs> trying to get something yeah, out of it. Just grapefruit it. technique and that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. I'll stop talking. Please uh, select an object at random. Now, this is an honor system. Am I going first? <laughs> well, it's left to right. Well, yeah, but on the screen, it's left to right. The other <laughs> point. Serge, this is your bit. Please. I'll go with <laughs> the honors. So, honor system, I'm whatever my hand touches first, I'm going to grab. Great. That sounds good. Okay. Oh, what is. Oh, it's cold. Why is it cold? Ooh. And wet. <laughs> it's drooping everywhere. <laughs> oh. Oh. What monster selected bell peppers? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I desperately need napkins. Where where did they go? There they Why are. Why is it so drippy? I, I think, oh, you've got one that is definitely it no longer has its structural integrity. Oh, that's yeah. a rotten pepper. Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh. a that's a moldy so pepper. Don't use that one. Well, I think we might want to just because it's covered in rotten pepper juice. We might want to give a quick rinse. Yeah, send that out to get the. Can yeah. somebody come back with one good rinsed one? Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, I'm covered. I, I guess you have a buy round right now that. <laughs> Excellent. While well, we're stretching for time, Ian, why don't you start us off? Sure, why not? Now that those are out of the way. Okay, I will also, of the same what? procedure. Was the water on that from the peppers? It or from something else from the box? <laughs> All of oh. my pieces are dry. Uh, at least they come dry. Okay. Oh. Huh. What have you found? Interesting. I was not <laughs> expecting... Great. And um, banana. Good stuff. So, so I guess bite the tips off and let her rip. Yep. I I like the idea of I'm gonna I'm gonna work it 
Maybe you can then you you can draw out like, some talk, of that talk banana me through flavor. your process here. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, what I'm trying to do is like I'm trying to loosen the s the skin around the shaft so that maybe some uh, some coffee can flow out. So, so you don't the think the banana bit? It, you think the banana is too firm to soak oh, in coffee? Oh, I think it might be, but we'll see how that goes in a second here when we actually get go you know what, let's get going here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's let's only reveal who picked which at the end. I'm so proud of you right uh, now. Uh, <laughs> It's like that bit when I ate a banana. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. All right, I need clean, to see this. I need to this see this. Studio. Right. And Tim, Tam, slam! <sighs> Get your whole mouth around the piece you opened up. I'm giving him some distance here, yeah. just in case. <laughs> I'm dying, Squirtle. <laughs> My God. <laughs> oh, did you get any? I think I got some coffee. How far up the banana did it get? Let's find out. We can open it up and find out. Yeah. Okay. Which oh. is the coffee end? You know what? That's the coffee end right okay. there. And we, we split it across. No. Oh, oh man, we got what half an inch. Mm. That's good. If you just suck the fruit, does it try to come up with the fruit? I mean, let's try. All this right. is science. Yeah. Oh. Too dense, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's really giving it the old college try. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can feel my brain. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Contracted. Fair. Fair. All right, I have a clean pepper here. Great. Okay, napkin, please. Yeah, can we get more yeah, napkins? Yeah. So one of the issues I'm realizing, is this seedless? <laughs> I don't know. All right, well then. I mean, generally peppers aren't, right? Like, yep. yeah. I mean, what is seed? Just bite down far enough that you'll get all the seeds out of the, out of the thing. This one might be bad too. Really? You want to zoom in? You think? I don't think they're supposed to bubble. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's if, fine. If, if one popped, like how firm is the flesh? If the flesh is firm, it's like all firm. around, it's pretty firm. It's pretty firm. You should be okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a Tim Tam <laughs> sham. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna be drinking seeds. Oh no. Hey, you want to you clean it out with your finger a bit? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. There we go. Be sure to zoom in on that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I would worry show me about, that technique. I would worry about this technique possibly loosening more oh, seeds. This is no. Now I've got more. I'm gonna have. Okay. Oh, that's not gonna work. Well, this is gonna be a straw. Is what this is gonna be. This is gonna be an enormous coffee straw. <laughs> All right. Well, bon appetit. Or sorry, Tim. Tam, Tam, Tam slam. Mm. <laughs> this is actually was less effort straw than I thought it would be. <laughs> Just in my mouth now. Well, big big no, bore. Now I have to. I have to suck and bite at the same time. Right. <laughs> Don't forget to cut the stem. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh, you know what? I think we need to bring this back in a few months with boba. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. When the it's nice and nice and cool out. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, new new favorite way to drink coffee, Serge? No. <laughs> You don't say. Would not do again. How about that? Um, so I'm going to be honest. The the coffee and the pepper do not complement each other. That's oh. unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, the pepper doesn't really hold anything into it, so you get a lot of the... It's The, the sweetness of the pepper actually clashes hmm. with the, uh, the bitters of the coffee. And hmm. now I have little pepper seeds floating in my coffee. So more to enjoy later is As what you're saying. You do. I guess it's me. Yeah. I just hit something immediately upon putting my hand in the Okay. Thing. So here's, here's what it is. Now I know none of mine are wrapped. I, oh. oh. There's a face on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Uh, it's thin. It's like the moon from that movie. It's exciting. What? It, <laughs> Ooh. How, how on earth? Huh. Oh. Uh, it's a pretzel. Yeah. I guess I bite both ends off simultaneously. I think you, I think you can pull a straw like shape off, yeah. like yeah. maybe do a, maybe do a bend, or just like hold the coffee up next to your face, like it's, a like a beer helmet. Okay, so if I do that, I'm gonna eat that later because pretzels are nice. Yeah. If I can 
<laughs> pretzel is nature's well, maybe, swirly maybe straw. Well, maybe go from the top. Oh my god, you're going all yep, the way around yep, the world. That sounds good. Okay. Oh no, I got a hole. Hang on. Uh oh. Are you plugging the hole with your thumb? Oh, oh, oh. Is it slamming? And bite? I haven't got any yet. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I can't get any. Oh, no. Careful, you're spilling, you're spilling, you're spilling. Oh, no, no. <laughs> okay, we can see how far the coffee's made it. It's, it's rounding the bend. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay, too dense. Yeah. Too dense. We'll give a bite on the other side. Oh, yeah. it's spilling everywhere. Yeah. Pretzel. Yeah, that's a. Okay, we'll bite the other side. One. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have ruined a wonderful pretzel. <laughs> um, it did. Oh. Kind of get. Well, actually, no. It really oh, just wow. soaked in. Yeah. Here, show the, uh, towards the camera. It, it really just kind of soaked oh, the bottom part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oof. So too dense. Too dense. Will it slam? The answer is nay. Oh, right. It's back to me, isn't it? <laughs> How's the coffee, Beach? Because I understand that salt actually improves coffee. Oh. Uh, oh, look at that. I still don't like coffee. <laughs> the the line between it's like the pepper, not enough stuff inside. The pretzel, the pretzel too dense. Too much mm -hmm. stuff. There's a delicate balance there for really slamming. Is. Yeah. Oh! We <laughs> <laughs> found it! Nana's chicken chimichanga. That's what it says in the package. <laughs> mm. So, um. I I saw those and didn't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for spring rolls, oh. and I thought these would be better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am I supposed to microwave this first or eat it cold? I think you were allowed to eat them cold. It doesn't. It, say well, it's going to warm up from the coffee. Yeah, the yeah. coffee warms it up. Yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about must be uh, m m must be cooked first, but it also doesn't say anything else other than Mama's <laughs> Jimmy and Jimmy Chuck. So I really like coffee, mm -hmm. and I really like chimneys. Mm. So I'm sure this is going to work out great. Absolutely. <laughs> well, as we said, bite out the corners. Yep. Oh, that's really good. I have to assume that it is a fairly like um, hollowish tube. Like there will be something will flow through that. I'm hoping the fried uh, yeah. batter will, will maintain that structural integrity necessary. Get a good seal. Yeah, to <laughs> to allow for a full slam. This is um, really good and a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're only using one. Yeah. You can palate cleanse with the other one. Yeah, and go home and make yourself some good coffee. And then dip it in the coffee. Serge <laughs> so was like, should I bring some good coffee for this thing? <laughs> we were all like, no! All right, everybody. Well, Tim, Tam, Tam slam! Mm. Okay. <laughs> It's like adding coffee to chili, right? Like it kind mm. of it's it's a dark flavor. Mm -hmm. It goes nice with the spicy. At least I assume. Yeah, mm. we'll, we'll see what the verdict is yeah. in a second. Let me it's try the, let me try the bottom half. Going back for going back for seconds. Yeah. Hmm. Final verdict? Honestly, slammable. Damn. Wow, okay. Oh. Surprising. Did not expect that. So, that. it has the right texture. It it's straw-like, but also holds it. Mm -hmm. So the liquid made it up very quickly, okay. very oh, we, easily. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it was immediate, right? The Not as bad as I thought it would be. Good. Great. What a relief. <laughs> the fact that when you lean down to put the end into the coffee cup, it puts your microphone right beside it. Uh, <laughs> we're getting some great ASMR on this one. All right, so now I need to decide which side of the box I'm going to follow <laughs> down to the edge. Well, I think you're the last thing now. Why are we the I last? still have one more. Oh, do you? I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. Okay. Oh no. Well. 
hoisted by my own petard here. I see. I'm going to wipe off some of the uh, the other uh, pepper oil because, uh, well, yours were simply good, regular old bell peppers. Uh -huh. That's a jalapeno, this isn't it? This is the mighty <laughs> jalapeno. Oh, yeah. no! I was going to buy Serrano's, actually. <laughs> yeah, the Serrano's didn't look very good, which is why I went with this one. Did you just play yourself? Oh, yeah. That's oh, what he hit first. wow. I mean, the thing is, I would feel bad about either of you ending up with oh, this. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But you still put it in the I'm box. Still, I'm still going to feel bad, <laughs> yeah. but for different reasons mm -hmm. now. <laughs> All right. Good crunch. I don't know. I'm going to apologize right now to your IBS. Need to get enough room for the hole there. And uh, you know, I'll take the whole top off because I don't like the stem. <laughs> oh. Do you see it? Do you see it? Wait, yeah. that's. Show it the camera. Why is that so dense? That's, uh, that's a lot, yeah. Yeah, and that's also the, uh, the, the nasty part. Mm -mm. Thank you. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, compromise the tube, though. Mm, that's what I did. I pushed a little too aggressively, yeah. and I broke my tube. Get my, but I also don't want to... Uh, we had multiple peppers. I mean, we could have got you another chili, like, other six. Chili coffee is a thing, right? Like mm -hmm. coffee with, like, spicy coffee. Oh, yeah. So what I'm doing right now is just basically working the oil of heat out of the pith and into your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Where, remember not to touch your eyes. <laughs> oh, that's that's going to be happening. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now there's the pith gone. Oh, that's a lot of seeds. Wow. Yep. Seeds and stems. I don't ever associate that many seeds with like a small pepper. Mm. Yeah. All right, Tim, Tam, Tam slam. slam. Mm. That noise. <laughs> oh, the sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Good, good, yeah. Wow. The full slam. All right. You're dripping a little. Mm. Right, I'll give you a second mm. to let this register. Mm. Mm. He's happy. That's He's good. making good yeah. noises. In his lane, flourishing. How is this thing? Wait, oh, you're eating? You eat the danger side. Yeah, great well, idea. There it is. Yep. <laughs> Are you supposed to eat the danger side? No, I'm sort of heated. I mean, whenever anybody chops them, it seems like they always just leave that stuff mm. in them, right? Oh, yeah. that was actually quite pleasant. How did it, how did it tin tin? Terribly. Or slam. Oh. It slams exactly. terribly. Okay. So I, I as I said, uh, I wanted to uh, encompass the spirit of the Tim Tam, and it got the liquid through, but it did not absorb itself into. Uh, mm. I'm actually just going to try dipping a bit of the pith. Actually. Like it didn't soften it in a way that kind of made no. it a yeah delicious no. treat. But it was you can still do it with one hand mm -hmm. or no hands. So that's the important thing. Yeah. I don't know why you people do this this way. Why you use peppers to drink your your coffee? It's mm. really weird. It's They're Italian. Italian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know. You, you, you'd understand if you drank coffee. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Beej, take us home. That should be one thing left. I have found it. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, what right. pray tell is that? Well, uh, oh, are you going to setsubun this? <laughs> yep. I'm going to I'm going to take as many bites as my age apparently. Hang on, let's see if we can get this thing open. Ah, uh, here we go. I think I really lucked out with the chimney. <laughs> Does anyone remember did. which which direction we're supposed to face uh, when chowing down on a mac? Is this it here? east or north? <laughs> it, it depends on the, the time. Oh, so is it? It's it's whatever's whatever works yeah. great. Whatever's so, auspicious. Yeah. So this is uh, kapamaki. <laughs> oh, so cucumber. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, as we say, bite off a corner or the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Here's the. There's, there's the cucumber. Oh, yeah, a lot of cucumber. Yeah, okay. There's a lot of cucumber. Holy shit. Is it good season rice? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Good, yes. Mm -hmm. I went to Sakura. So like oh. the, the salted rice or whatever. Okay, the cucumber is going to leave uh, room. I mean, the rice, in theory, should, it, it should, should hold it pretty well here. It's just trying to slam this. <laughs> yeah, there's that big gash along the my, side. My, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Might right. be a bit hard. Let's see Tim's. what happens. Tim! Slam! <laughs> i to use both hands for this one. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, he's trying, folks. Oh. He wants that coffee. I don't know if that's the lips breaking the seal or the sound of liquid moving. He needs that bean juice up his kapamaki. <laughs> he's not coming. Oh. oh. Christ! <laughs> Work it for an hour. It's so it got. Oh, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christ. Oh, I still don't want coffee. Um, Beans will get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just try dipping and see how it works. Well, I, I took I took a bite off the end with the coffee, but let's just see if I can if I seal this end back up if I can kind of get. Okay. All right. All right. So you think it was you think it was a leak area? Yeah. Not a... I should have asked them to like double wrap it or sure. something. Sure. Do any of those uh, those uh, non lube Trojans left? <laughs> All right. Mm. Creating a vacuum mm. so powerful it's hurting his brain. Mm. No. <sighs> it's not coming. All right. So we've learned um, <laughs> uh, a kappa roll. Kappa maki? It really like felt it. like it should have. All that, yeah. the extra holes in there for like. Um, I feel like if you got a properly sealed maki. Maybe but that would probably work. But well, that's I think if it was, it, I don't think I think it's too dense because I think if there was an air hole, it wouldn't be causing that issue. You'd feel you'd feel you'd be pulling air through it, and it would just be coming through the sides instead of pulling yeah. the liquid up. It felt like it may have been just too dense in general, hence the vibrating beachhead. You know yeah. what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try that with miso soup sometime. Sure. Uh, Can I watch? Maybe. <laughs> 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 This is how they do it in the mother clan. <laughs> like the the <laughs> sticky the like we are going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> the sticky rice I think uh, seals more than uh, yeah uh, you would expect. I would assume so. Like it's just that I thought for sure that <gasps> the the that the um, the the chopped up cucumber would act as enough of a hollow like air hole. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing about all the good sushi is that you should you shouldn't be jamming the the grains together. It should mm. be uh, lightly pushed. So. Yeah. So I think the biggest surprise here is uh, the chimichanga as a viable Tim Tam alternative. If you want a Tim Tam slam at home, like he, all the Italians are doing these mm -hmm. days, right? Exactly. Uh, any other any other final thoughts? I'm surprised the banana didn't work. <laughs> the banana, the the cellular growth mm. of the uh, of the banana interior, I think, really inhibited anything more than uh, than just pressure based uh, movement. Do you think if it was more ripe, it would have worked? No. Okay, so it would have been more of a paste. Yeah. Interesting. I think you, 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 what you need to do is you need to just hollow out, maybe get a finger in through the uh, like the, the central triangular meeting point in the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe nice, you, uh, like a drill bit, and just kind of. <laughs> yeah. You get, what I'm saying is you got to sound your banana before you actually mm -hmm. slam it. I think you've just made like a banana straw then. Yeah. Really. Oh. Essentially. Well then, on that note, mm. thank you very much for watching Little Read Live. We appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Yes. And now, this. Great show tonight, everyone. To celebrate, I bought us all tickets to Morbius. Hey! Morbs, 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 Morbs,